Since it was set up in 2005, the AHRC has put in place a number of activities to encourage partnerships and knowledge exchange, to make sure the value of the research they support goes beyond the Academy itself. Today, knowledge exchange and partnership working are central themes for the AHRC as they go about creating opportunities for arts and humanities researchers to reach out to new and diverse audiences, markets and organisations. As Susan Amor, AHRC's Head of Knowledge Exchange, explains, the current focus for research impact is the UK's creative economy. We're talking about the creative industries primarily, but um, the creative economy is much broader than just the creative industries and does involve wherever creativity appears within a business or a policy organisation. We're certainly very interested in working directly with the private sector but it also involves working with other organisations such as cultural organisations and our independent research organisations who comprise a number of leading museums and galleries. Essentially, it's wherever creativity is an essential part of what they do. Jim Playfoot is Managing Director of White Loop, an SME working in education and lifelong learning and based in London. They discovered the benefits of working in partnership after becoming involved with a digital storytelling initiative. Project Aspect involves partners from the AHRC, the University of Falmouth and the Department of Energy and Climate Change. I knew a guy called Mike Wilson who was the uh, principal investigator of the project. We had been talking for some time about the role of storytelling and narrative in an educational context and also in a sort of public policy context. And out of those conversations came an idea for a project and University of Falmouth were interested in having a, an SME on board for that project. So we actually worked with University of Falmouth on developing the idea and developing the proposal. So we were kind of in at the beginning. Of course, bringing together academic and non-academic organisations is not without its challenges. Jim Playford questioned whether such collaborations would be good for business development. He even questioned the cultural differences between small firms and academic institutions, where working practices, commercial pressures and individual expectations can vary hugely. I do think it very much comes down to the individuals involved. In, in the case of Project Aspect, I really didn't have too many problems because the individuals involved were very dynamic, very creative and kept things moving. I think that perhaps there's more of a perception of cultural difference in some cases than there actually is. That's more of a characterisation of what it's like than necessarily what it's always like in practice and I didn't really find that to be a problem on this project. In setting about encouraging its research community to work more in partnership, the AHRC acknowledged that the creative industries are known to be fast-paced and often driven by highly innovative companies. At the same time, the need for clear, easy-to-understand guidance on how to approach this complex activity became apparent, and work started on bringing together people's ideas and experience into one easy-to-read booklet. We developed the guide over quite an extended period of time, uh, drawing on others' experiences and the perspectives of a range of individuals, both within the HRC and from across our stakeholder communities. And we wanted to present it in a user-friendly way, based on real experiences as a way of supporting the community and their potential partners in, in an activity which is becoming an increasingly important part of our agenda. It's intended as a practical self-help and dip-in-and-out resource that provides real-life hints and tips for those who've been there and come out the other side. <laughs> but to be clear, though, it is an HRC telling the community how to do this. Um, and it's not a guarantee of success, but it does offer some pointers on what works and what doesn't from those who have been through the ups and downs and come through smiling. Primarily, AHRC's new guide to partnership working is aimed at both researchers and their potential partners in the private, public and cultural sectors. It includes tips from Jim Playfoot's White Loop organisation, as well as guidance from university knowledge exchange managers and research managers, AHRC staff and others with an interest in developing this type of partnership. In reaching out to this wide audience, Rob Keegan, AHRC's knowledge exchange portfolio manager, explains how they set out to produce something that would have broad appeal. We wanted it to be bright and colourful, easy to use. It's in a the hard copies in a ring binder. It's also designed to be a working document because this is a fast-moving environment. Things change. We're learning new things all the time. 
So things that we have in here today may not be applicable in a few years' time, or there may be new insights that we have that we can add to this guide. So it's designed to be something that's used, something that can be adapted and changed, but also it's meant to be fun and accessible, and as I say, written in a language that people will find easy to understand and it will make sense to them. Since knowledge exchange is essentially about partners from different backgrounds working together collaboratively on a project that brings mutual benefits, the guide has been developed to support that process, and in particular to encourage discussion and help partners work more effectively together. It's to prompt specific issues and different stages through the partnership that they might want to sit down and talk about together. It will certainly help them plan how they're going to work and the methodology. That's where the practical hints and tips come in. You know, it's from people who've actually done this stuff, who've actually worked in this way. This is what works, this is what doesn't work so well. So here's the benefit of our experience. The advice contained in the guide aims to encourage both private businesses and researchers, and the process isn't meant to be a one-way street, as Rob Keegan explains. It isn't just a one-way thing. It's not about academics going out and finding partners. It works the other way as well because, you know, there's a, there's a big demand out there in the world for organisations and businesses to work with academia, to have access to high-quality research. So this guide will help them as well because it will help them think about how they can access, how can they get into. What we're often seen is universities can often be seen as sort of, you know, hard edifices that you can't break into. Uh, and what this guide will hopefully do is to, is to make that, um, make that process a lot easier. And as one of the guide's business contributors, Jim Playfoot has included his own hints and tips on how to go about setting up partnerships. His experience with Project Aspect helped him understand that businesses like his have much to gain from working in collaboration with academia and believes that AHRC's partnership guide will go a long way to encouraging and supporting those wanting to work more with others. It's often just a lack of information of what's involved that can really hold up that engagement. I think it's also important for a guide like this to speak to the institutions involved and get them thinking about what they can do better to attract and to engage with small businesses. Some institutions that perhaps do it very well and some that do it less well. So I think there needs to be just more information and understanding on both sides about how these partnerships can actually take off. It's hoped that once people appreciate the benefits to be had from working in partnership, new collaborative relationships will develop creating interdisciplinary research by academics new to knowledge exchange and engaging a wide range of partners from other sectors. Susan Amor hopes that these innovative and challenging projects will actually push the boundaries of conventional approaches to knowledge exchange and research and improve the outcomes for everyone concerned. The guide itself really will have an effect and we'll see more and more quality partnerships coming through, a wider range of academics working with a much wider range of partners. We're always keen to encourage academics who are new to knowledge exchange to work in a knowledge exchange project. But again, it's going back to that building awareness. And for those from the business sector, such as Jim Playfoot, one thing is clear. Working in partnership has been a hugely rewarding experience in itself, helping to encourage new collaborations in the future. The really kind of novel and exploratory aspect of the work has been a real revelation. Often the work that I do is very much more defined and more rigid in terms of the outputs. This was very open-ended and it's a joy to actually be involved in a project that's that open-ended. And it's also given me a great deal of access to some very interesting people. It's been a very valuable experience for me personally. It's been a learning experience and it's been a really enjoyable project to play a really senior role in.